Persepolis, the story of a childhood by Marjan Satrapi, a book talk by Christy Folsom. Persepolis is a poignant graphic memoir that chronicles the life of Margie Satrapi as she's coming of age in Iran during the Islamic Revolution. Through striking black and white illustrations and a candid narrative, Satrapi explores themes of identity, political turmoil, and the challenges faced by a young girl navigating a changing society, offering a deeply personal and powerful account of her experiences. I first read this book as a young adult myself at a time recently post 9-11 when Americans were told a very single note story about Iran and other Muslim countries. Satrapi blew that narrative wide open for me showing a very nuanced portrayal of her life in Iran. Margie's childhood, like my own, was complicated and messy. She is, just as I was, going through the universal experience of growing up, feeling pulled between a traditional good girl while also experiencing the anger and rebellion that comes with teenagehood. A great example of this comes when Margie must begin wearing a veil at school. She is torn about the idea, sometimes feeling it to be an expression of her religious faith, and at other times feeling confused or repressed by the requirements of wearing it in public or being separated from her male friends in school. This is me when I was 10 years old. This was in 1980. In 1979, a revolution took place. It was later called the Islamic Revolution. Then came 1980 the year it became obligatory to wear the veil at school. Wear this. We really didn't like to wear the veil, especially since we didn't understand why we had to. It's too hot out. Execution in the name of freedom. Ooh, I am the monster of darkness. Give me my veil back. You'll have to lick my feet. Giddy up. And also because the year before, in 1979, we were in a French non-religious school. Where boys and girls were together. And then suddenly, in 1980... All bilingual schools must be closed down. They are symbols of capitalism. Bravo! What wisdom! Of decadence. This is called a cultural revolution. We found ourselves veiled and separated from our friends. And that was that. I really didn't know what to think about the veil. Deep down, I was very religious. But as a family, we were very modern and avant-garde. While this story is very specifically tied to Margie's life in Iran and the Islamic revolution happening there, it is also very relatable. I think we all know and understand how it might feel to be in this situation and can relate to the complicated emotions associated with growing up and having to come to our own conclusions about faith and culture and identity. Margie's story also does not shy away from the violence and upheaval specific to her childhood growing up in 1980s Iran, essentially in an active war zone. Towards the end of the novel, she shares a story about living through a bombing. Okay, I'll take the jeans and these earrings. And I'll take that ring, there. We were in the midst of shopping euphoria when suddenly... A missile has just exploded in the Tavanier neighborhood. What? Tavanier was where I lived. The jeans! If someone had timed me, I think I would have beat the world's speed record. Taxi! A crowd had gathered in front of my street. The bomb had hit my street. Ma'am, which building was hit? Apparently, it exploded at the end of the street. My building and the Baba Levies were at the end of the street. Let me through. One chance in two that it was our building. Please, let me through. You can't go beyond this point. I live here. And he let me through. I didn't want to look up. 
I looked at my trembling legs. I couldn't go forward, like in a nightmare. Let them be alive. Let them be alive. Let them... Margie! Margie! Mom! You're all right? Dad's all right? Grandma's all right? Everyone's okay. I was the only one home. Oh, Mom. So Troppy goes on to share in this story that while the bomb missed her home and her family was safe, it destroyed the home of her next door neighbors and killed their entire family, including her friend Nedia Babalevi. Experiencing this trauma and loss changes Margie. She becomes angry and rebellious. She fights with her teachers and speaks out against the Iranian government in school. Eventually, her parents realize Iran is no longer a safe place for her. The story ends with a tearful goodbye with her parents as teenage Margie is sent to live a safer but lonely life with her family friends in Vienna. Persepolis has faced multiple bans and challenges. In 2013, the Chicago public school system removed it from classrooms and libraries overnight, citing graphic language and images as the reason. The book faced more challenges in different school districts, and it was the second most challenged book on ALA's top 10 list of frequently challenged books for 2014. It is evident that Islamophobia played a role in some of these challenges. For example, one challenging parent asked why a book about Muslims was assigned on September 11th, while others expressed disappointment with its inclusion in a community-wide book discussion specifically meant to be about Muslim journeys around the world. But despite the opposition, Persepolis continues to foster informed and nuanced discussions and understanding about Iran and the experiences of Islamic people. The very themes that have caused it to be challenged, the fact that it portrays Iranians not as veil-wearing villains or anti-terrorist heroes, but as complicated individuals, as humans, just like anyone. Those very themes are what makes it such a wonderful read. I would recommend this book to anyone, but because uh, it is so much a coming of age story dealing with themes of angst and identity, I would highly recommend it to teens specifically. If you're looking for more deliciously rebellious banned graphic novels to read, uh, you can continue with Margie's story in Persepolis 2. I also recommend the Complete Mouse series and Gender Queer, which are two other amazing graphic novel memoirs. If you're looking for more deliciously rebellious banned graphic novels to read, uh, you can continue with Margie's story in Persepolis 2. I also recommend the Complete Mouse series and Gender Queer, which are two other amazing graphic novel memoirs.